Hi, a very good morning. I am privileged to have uh, Dr. Raju Ishwaran, and we will be interacting on a very important topic, which is the traumatic knee dislocation. We find that the incidence of this particular injury has significantly increased because of the high velocity injuries that we come across. But it is always confusing to know how we need to treat this sort of patients. What guidelines should we follow? Because what a trauma surgeon does is slightly different from what a sports medicine consultant expects to be done in such a scenario. So I welcome you, sir. When we have a patient whom we suspect to have a knee dislocation, what should be the way we need to assess this patient in the emergency setup? Uh, thank you so much for having me here. Uh, and as you rightly said, there is sometimes a disparity between what a trauma surgeon's uh, line of thinking and what a sports medicine surgeon's line of thinking is. And uh, perhaps the best thing for the patient would be a collaboration between a person dedicated to the management of bony trauma and a person dedicated to soft tissue management. If both of them can collaborate for uh, their respective areas of expertise, I feel that will probably give the best results to the patient. Now, the initial assessment, knee dislocation is generally a high velocity injury. Of course, there's an exception. Uh, injury, as we all know, is uh, related to the momentum and momentum is mass multiplied by velocity. So an object with high mass can get injured with a low velocity. So sometimes we do see low velocity knee dislocations uh, from things as trivial as uh, fall from a stair or uh, just fall from a vehicle. So that should be kept in mind. So knee dislocation is not something that is uh, unique to a high velocity trauma. One must suspect it in low velocity trauma as well. I'm assuming that the initial assessment in terms of the ATLS protocol has been done, the airway breathing circulation, and we are referring to the initial assessment in orthopedic terms. Uh, now, when it comes to orthopedic terms, the very first thing to assess is, is there is any threat to the limb? and uh, that is best assessed through assessment of peripheral vascular pulses. Now, there's a lot of debate on whether to do an angiography, whether to do a Doppler, whether to do any other form of invasive or non-invasive vascular study to assess limb vascularity. Multiple studies and the knee dislocation group have uh, reiterated their stand that uh, just a serial estimation of pedal pulses the posterior tibial pulse or the ankle pulse, if you just do a serial estimation of pulses over a 24 to 48 hour time period, that is more than enough for assessment of the limb vascularity. Because initially it was feared that intimal tears progress to thrombus formation and will lead to occlusion of the major blood vessels. But it has been discovered that most intimal tears don't progress. Of course, if you note that the quality of pulse diminishes over a 24 or a 48 hour period, you would then do an MR angiogram or a CT angio or any other form of invasive angio that your vascular department is used to doing. And that probably comes under the purview of the vascular surgeon. And uh, the, the only role of an orthopedic surgeon here is to make a timely referral so that the limb can be saved if there is a need to do that. Now with that out, uh, we have ensured that the limb is viable. Uh, the patient is also doing okay in terms of airway breathing circulation. Then comes to the assessment of the injury. And uh, when it comes to injury assessment, you have to do a quick uh, orthopedic examination in terms of uh, see uh, uh, the look, feel, move assessment. And uh, you have to see is there uh, any dislocation actually present. Now, uh, there comes a slight uh, controversy if you, if you feel that the knee joint is obviously dislocated, it doesn't make too much sense to first get the x-ray of the patient and then reduce it. Uh, if it is possible to do a gentle reduction in the examination room itself or in the emergency room itself, something which doesn't need too much force and to put a splintage or whatever sort may be available to you. It may be a thomas splint, it may be a long knee immobilizer. So you can think of uh, doing a reduction because you might actually save a little bit of vascular injury and uh, soft tissue trauma to the patient if you do an immediate reduction. Of course, if the immediate reduction is not practical because it's not reducing or if it's horribly painful to the patient, then it may be a prudent practice to uh, get some imaging so that you understand the nature of injury and then proceed on to uh, the reduction. So uh, in the local examination, one thing to look for in the inspection is to look at the pattern of ecchymosis or the pattern of bruises. This may be a little difficult in a dark skinned person, uh, but uh, the pattern of bruises might point you to the location of injury. 
If the bruise is located on the medial side, for example, you can suspect a medial uh, capsular complex injury. Uh, posteriorly uh, located ecchymosis is more or less uh, pathognomic of a PCL injury and a posterior capsule injury. Now, one common denominator in all these uh, knee dislocations is the injury to the PCL. So, you must uh, expect that the PCL is torn until proven otherwise. It's exceedingly rare to have a knee which is dislocated and the PCL uh, to be absolutely intact. So, PCL is generally torn and it is also important to ligament uh, is, is also important to remember in all these uh, injuries that patellar ligament is also an important ligament around the knee and it is an often missed injury so a clinical examination will tell you if there's a tear in the patellar tendon or if there's a tear in the quadriceps tendon and this can be further confirmed with imaging like an x-ray or an mri or a ct scan subsequently so that's how i would do an initial assessment a is the patient's life in danger B is the patient's limb in danger and C uh, what uh, portions of the knee appear to be in danger on the clinical examination. Um, very well brought about points sir, regarding how do we assess uh, clinically. So you have brought in these points about vessels. What exactly do we do uh, to know the condition of the nerves as well as uh, many a times it may be possible that the patient can have even a compartment syndrome after a knee dislocation. So, how, uh, how do we go about assessing these uh, problems? So, standard neurological examination, assessment of sensations, particularly in the autonomous zone of the common peroneal nerve and uh, uh, that forms a part of the standard neurology looking at the EHL. So, these uh, basic examinations will establish uh, the presence of any neurovascular injury. As you rightly said, compartment syndrome, a palp uh, it can just be assessed on the basis of palpation, formal compartment pressure measurement is available in very very few centers and I honestly have no exposure to any center wherein formal compartments uh, pressure measurement is available.